That's the first day too, right? The second day. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here at uh, 5 o'clock for five minutes, except it's 4.45 at 5 for five minutes with Anu Hiddo. Uh, she is the host of uh, Climate Change, our show Climate Change uh, Beyond Outrage, and she is now deployed on assignment at the World Conservation Congress, the IUCN, and she reports to us every afternoon around this time about what's going on. And, and this is day six of the uh, World Conservation Congress. So bring us current, will you, Anu? Aloha, how are you? Good. So uh, I will bring you up to date a little bit. We've had, this is day six of the Congress, of the World Conservation Congress. And the first five days was something called the Members Forum. And now we're into the Members Assembly. So the forum itself was the first five days where the public and everyone else was invited. And there were all kinds of pavilions and a whole bunch of hoopla going on downstairs. There were workshops and site events and high level discussions. Um, we heard a little bit from me on day one and day two. We had superstars here, Jane Goodall and uh, Sylvia Earle and E.O. Wilson and all of these wonderful folks. And now the forum is finished, that finished yesterday. So it is a lot quieter here on the floor. Um, there is something called the members assembly where all the members of the IUCN get together and vote. They vote on these motions. And this is, this is perhaps a little bit more boring for everyone else, but it really is very important because this is when, where and when the conservation agenda for the globe is decided. That this really is where non-governmental organizations and governments and other members get together and they pass something called resolutions. So they've been um, filtering up motions from all of the all of the members. This is a process that's been going on since January. Uh, UH Law School, the University of Hawaii Manoa Law School, has been. Uh, um, putting together a, and helping to draft seven of these motions. They all got approved, so they were really happy. Uh, this is when that approval happens. So for the first time ever, IUCN did an electronic voting process, an online process. So about 100 motions and 85 of those were debated online and then passed uh, for approval to be passed really at the on the floor today. Mm -hmm. So 85 on block all of them passed. And then now about 14 of them are being put for discussion and debate um, at the assembly that began today. Could you give us an example of a motion? Yes, I certainly could. So of some of those that were passed electronically, these motions actually afford protection to species, habitats, and also identify emerging issues. So for example, a species specific one is uh, conservation of the helmeted hornbill. Okay, so that was one motion that was debated electronically and it passed. Uh, a country or region specific one was supporting the Brazilian red listing process and the conservation of threatened species there. So that's a little broader. It's a country and region wide uh, initiative. And a more general one perhaps is protected areas as natural solutions to climate change. So these were all motions that passed electronically. On the floor and perhaps quite hotly debated will be uh, motions like IUCN policy on biodiversity offsets, IUCN response to the Paris Climate Change Agreement. That may not be as hotly debated, but <laughs> but it's <laughs> um, anyway. I think I think it's actually quite clear. Uh, Tom Lovejoy of the Smithsonian yesterday said that two degrees, which is what the Paris Agreement has uh, proclaimed, is the target. The two degrees is just too hot a world that corals will die at two degrees. So I think there will be an interesting response that way. So what's happened is that uh, these motions were passed electronically today, but then the ones that are being debated on the floor will come about to, on Friday. They will, they will vote on them on Friday. But all through tomorrow, Wednesday, there will be contact groups which will try and come to some kind of consensus to, for each of these motions. So I will be attending a couple of those and then can give you an update tomorrow. Yeah, please, we look forward to that. Let me ask you one question before we go. Yes. And that is you have motions and you have resolutions, but those do not have the force of law. So how do we get to action points on this? How do we actually enforce the conclusions that are being made at the World Conservation Congress? Okay, so the motions become resolutions or re recommendations. And of course, this is all soft policy, all soft law, right? So this does not become law, but it 
as as such once it's a motion i'm sorry once it's a resolution it does not become law but once it's a resolution it is something that the global community has agreed to and it's something that governments can point to or non-governmental groups can point to and say to these to their governments look the whole world community agrees that two degrees is too hot we've got to do something else and then civil society can put pressure on their governments and governments can follow up with actual laws yes so it's a follow-up thing just as that's a follow-up thing this is a follow-up thing so we'll see you tomorrow around this time for day seven at IUCN the World Conservation Congress thank you so much Anu Hiddle thank you very much it's good to be here aloha aloha